Now, Senator Bernie Sanders is at it again, this time scaring Walmart CEO Doug McMillan into calling on Congress to raise the minimum wage. Now, uh, this coincided with a shareholders meeting in which Sanders had crashed. Uh, now, he'd actually invite, was invited to this meeting by a woman named Kat Davis. Uh, now, this was a Walmart employee for more than a decade, uh, and she asked him to be his proxy, uh, her proxy in order to make the case for a plan that would put hourly associates on the corporate board. Now, that corporate board currently includes high-ranking executives from places like McDonald's. Why is the McDonald's uh, executive sitting on the Walmart board? That's weird. Not only that, but he also called to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. So Bernie Sanders basically got to make his case right to the board. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, now, before that happened, the CEO, Doug McMillan, said this. Quote, the federal minimum wage is lagging behind. 725 is too low. It's time for Congress to put a thoughtful plan in place to increase the minimum wage. Any plan should take into account phasing and cost of living differences to avoid unintended consequences. Now, here you have a CEO of a major corporation basically being scared so much by progressive power that they're like, okay, 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 okay. Yes, we should have a, a higher minimum wage. Uh, but but what? It should take into uh, account phasing and cost of living differences. Because, you know, basically what that means is that in places like Arkansas, the minimum wage could actually be lower than $15 an hour. But it also means that in places like California, for example, L.A., San Francisco, that that minimum wage should be much higher than $15 an hour. And that makes, to be honest, a certain amount of sense. Um, because mainly I, I want to see uh, places reflect the cost of living so that it can truly be a living wage. Again, that would mean uh, California, San Francisco would probably go up to $22, $25 an hour, which is absolutely fine because that economy can handle that. Uh, but it also does help, I think in a way, or is at least designed to help, uh, states like Arkansas with a much lower standard of living uh, and still allow these workers to make enough money to live. So not too bad, right? I, I'll, I'll take it for now um, because, again, this does show that Bernie Sanders is having and the progressive movement is having a huge impact on some of these shareholders. Uh, now, I also want to talk about the timing here, right? It is interesting timing. Uh, that the day that Bernie Sanders shows up and gives a speech about raising the minimum wage and also about putting workers on the corporate board, here comes the uh, you know this chief executive saying, oh, we should do some minimum wage. Now, it's curious why he didn't actually also talk about putting people on the board. So there's two things going on, as I said. They're scared of Bernie uh, because of the immense political power. That is something that Politico, by the way, and other similar outlets seem to ignore with all those hit pieces of, oh, Bernie Sanders. Bernie is fading. The incredible shrinking Bernie Sanders. That's a political headline. Which, by the way, he's not shrinking. Elizabeth Warren is gaining in the polls because she actually has uh, something that most of the other candidates don't, and that is an idea for basically everything. So, yes, yeah, she is gaining in the polls. And it's good to see that... You know what's winning the primary? Ideas. Bernie Sanders has ideas, and so does Elizabeth Warren. Uh, that is not taking away from Bernie Sanders her rise. Um, in fact, Biden's rise, or I should say Biden's, uh, who is the current front runner, his poll numbers have actually taken a dive. He's lost seven points, uh, so in the latest rankings. But anyway, uh, no, the second thing is, and this is what's really important, they wanted to draw away from basically the idea of filling their corporate board full of workers. I mean, come on, right? Now, Sanders explains to CNN, quote, putting workers on the Walmart board is enormously important because at the end of the day, working people have got to have some control over how they spend at least eight hours a day. They cannot simply be cogs in a machine. To be a human being means that you have some ability to control your life, and that includes your work life. Now, that was, of course, uh, an earlier interview of Bernie Sanders before he went to make his case in front of the board. 
And look, when it comes to that policy, I love it. I know. Putting workers in the board, and I know heads are going to explode. It's actually really good for the company. Now, right now, CEOs and board members only represent themselves. They represent shareholders, right? That means the companies are going to focus on short-term profits so they can get rich as fast as possible. Now, the problem with that is that it does not look at the long-term health of the company. Now, if you put in the workers to the board to advocate for themselves and give them power of decision-making in, in, in the company, it, they're going to make less short-term profit. That is one thing, right? Oh, no, my short-term profit. But what would happen with that is that they would make better long-term decisions. So the company would be more viable in the long run because workers, basically what they want is they want a stable job at a decent wage. And so they're, they're going to be in favor and they're going to vote for policies that keep the company running and allow them to continue their jobs. That's going to create stability for workers, but it's also going to be good for shareholders and executives because that means good long-term profits. Everybody wins. There's, there will be profit, but it won't be as obscene as it is now. And it also might lead to less companies crashing and going bankrupt and maybe less recessions as well. Uh, this is what they do in Germany, and it's had success, it has some success. And so we can look as, uh, and, and learn a lot from labor movements in other places in America. And some of these places have a lot better outcomes for regular working people. That's something to, you know, take into, uh, uh, you know, that we should look at. Uh, we should really kind of examine and, and, and emulate, I think. Now, finally, Bernie Sanders in doing this also shows what kind of a president he would be. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm gonna have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show, you know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.